Hello everyone, my name is Prahalad, and this is 7th grade math with all STEM. In today's video, we will start reviewing statistics and probability by going over how to draw inferences using a random sample of a population. This video consists of 8 to 15 review questions with an explanation after each question. If you get a question correct, you can skip to the next question using the timestamp in the video. If you get a question incorrect, you should stay and watch the explanation after the question. If you still want some extra practice after watching the video, check out the links for further reference page in the description box. Here you can find questions and solutions similar to the ones we went over in the video, which is great for extra practice. Alright, now it's time to get started with the first practice problem of the video. Alright, the first practice question says, Mary Margaret wanted to survey the students at her workplace, so she put the names of all of the workers into a hat. Then she drew a hundred names out of the hat, and whoever she drew she would survey. Is this a random sample of the students in her office? And you can pause the video and solve this question on your own, and when you're ready to see the answer, you can play the video. Okay, the correct answer to this question is, yes, it is a random sample of the students. So, when she places all of the names into a hat and draws the names randomly, there's an equal chance of each student to be chosen. So yes, it would be a random sample. The next practice question says, Henry and David are both on the student council at their school. The council narrowed down the theme of the spring dance to three choices, and they want to survey 100 out of Storybrook High School's 2,000 students. Henry thinks that in order to survey 100 students, the council should have 10 committee members ask 10 of their friends and record their responses. Ben thinks that they should assign a number between 1 and 2,000 to each student and use a computer program to generate 100 random numbers and ask whoever had their number chosen. Whose idea is a random sample of Storybrook High School? The correct answer to this question is Ben's idea. Henry's idea has is not random because the the student council members can decide who's chosen and therefore it isn't a random selection. But Ben's idea has a random number assigned to each student and and a hundred numbers chosen. So that so it's completely random and it cannot be influenced. So Ben's idea is a random sample. Practice question number three says, Regina, a teacher at a middle school in Maine, took a large sample of seventh grade students in Maine, which showed that 20% of them were reading below grade level. Based on this data, which of the following is a valid conclusion that she can make? A, about 20% of all seventh grade students in Maine were below grade level. B, 20% of this sample was reading below grade level, but we cannot conclude anything about the population. C. About 20% of all students in Maine were, were reading below grade level. The correct answer to this question is A. About 20% of all 7th grade students in Maine were reading below grade level. So. She took a large sample of all the students in Maine and or of all the seventh grade students in Maine. And so we can't conclude anything about all the students in Maine. So that would rule out choice C. And then because it was a reasonably large sample of all the student students in Maine, it can be concluded that 20% of all around 20% of all seventh grade students were reading below grade level. It would be a reasonable conclusion to make, so that would mean choice A is correct. Practice question number four. The cafeteria directors, Mr. Gold and Bell at Storybrook Middle School, want to know what percent of the students would choose vegetarian entrees if they were available. Mr. Gold thinks that they should ask the first 35 students who are in line to purchase food. 
Bell thinks that they should sort a list of the students into a random order, then ask the first 35 students on the list. Which of the two ideas is an example of a random sample? The correct answer to this question is Bell's idea. So first we can see that Mr. Gold uh, Miss, Mr. Gold thinks that they should ask the first 35 students who are in line to purchase food. And this isn't necessarily a random sample because there could be some trends within the first 35 students. Meanwhile, if 35 students are randomly chosen, for ex such as how Bell's ideas said, where they're sorted into a list and the first 35 students on the list are chosen to give their, I to give their input, then it would be a random selection because it cannot be influenced by any other factors. Practice question five. Ruby helped estimate the hare population in a nearby wildlife preserve. First, a group of workers from the Department of Fish and Game marked 58 hares at their preserve. A few weeks later, Ruby hiked around the preserve and counted a total of 600 hares, of which 40 were marked. To the nearest whole number, what is the best estimate for the hare population? The correct answer to this question is 870 hairs. So to solve this question, we need to set up a proportion. So the pro we need to use a formula. M marked hairs counted over total hairs counted. equals total hairs marked over the population estimate. So that's what we're going to solve for. So we can just plug in the values. We have the marked hairs counted is 40 right here over the total hairs counted, which is 600, equals the total hairs marked, which is 58 over the estimate, which we can keep as E. And so we can start off by simplifying the left side. It's just a fraction. So it's going to be 1 over 15. 1 over 15 equals 58 over our variable E. And now we can cross multiply. E, 1 E, 1 times E, equals 58 times 15. And I'm going to do the 58 times 15 out on the side. 58 times 15. 8 times 5 is 40. That's going to be 29. And then make sure to have the 0 as a placeholder. 8 times 1 is 8, and 5 times 1 is 8. 7, 1, and then we're going to get 870. So we're going to get E equals 870. And that's our final answer. That's the estimate of the number of hairs in the wildlife preserve. Practice question six. Archie's travel agency surveyed a random sample of 30 of their clients about their vacation plans. Of the clients surveyed, 11 expected that they would go on three vacations in the next year. In total, there are 420 getaway travel agency clients. Based on the data from the sample, what is the most reasonable estimate for the number of getaway travel agency clients who expect to go on three vacations in the next year. The correct answer to this question is 154 clients. So again, we have to set up a, pro a proportionality. So out of the 30 surveyed, 11 expected that they would go on three vacations, so we can set up 11 over 30 equals x, which is the estimate, over 420, because 420 is the total amount of clients. 
So we can start off by cross multiplying. 420 times 11. Do that out on the side. Two, four times one is four. And then add on the zero times one is two. So we're going to get 4,620. 4,620 equals 30x. 30x. And now we have to divide both sides by 30 so that we have x alone. So we can do that long division. 4,620 over 30. 30. 16, 5 times 30 is 150, and then that's just going to be 154. So x equals 154. That would be the most reasonable estimate for the number of getaway travel agency clients who expect to go on three vacations in the next year. That's our final answer. All right, the final practice question says, Emma surveyed a random sample of 50 subscribers to Killian's Car Me Mechanics magazine about the number of cars that they own. Of the subscribers surveyed, 15 own more than two vehicles. There are 340 subscribers to the magazine. Based on the data, what is the most reasonable estimate for the number of magazine subscribers who own more than two vehicles? The correct answer to this question is 102 magazine subscribers. So this question is similar to the last one. So we need to set up a proportional relationship. Uh, so out of the subscribers surveyed, 15 own more than two vehicles out of the 50 surveyed. So 15 over 50 equals X over 340 total. So we, we can cross multiply. 50x equals 340 times 15, and that multiplication I'm going to do over here, 340 times 15, 0 times 5 is 0, 5 is 20, 3 times 5 is 15, and we get 1700, and then the placeholder is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 5. 3 times 1 is 3. So we add them up and we get 5,100. So 50x equals 5,100. And now we need to divide both sides by 50. And so I'm going to do that long division over here. 5,100 divided by 50. 50 goes into 51 one time. 10 goes into 50 zero times, 0 times 50 is 0, 10, and then 100 goes into 50 twice, so we get 102, so, and 50 over 50 is just 1, so x equals 102, so the estimate is 102 people. We hope that was a good review of some statistics and probability. If you still need some extra practice, you can look in the links for further reference page in the description box. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we will try our best to answer them. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in part 2 of this video.